Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the AMT kit AMT873. It's the Shazoom Corvair, and the kit is a 125 scale, skill level 3 kit for the advanced builder. It consists of 90 parts molded in white, clear, clear red, chrome, and vinyl tires. The instruction sheet is broken down into steps that assemble the car in modules. And the decals are very crisp reprints with cartograph doing the honors. The motor assembles nicely and details pretty good. It would be easy to add extras to this motor too. And the interior is a simple tub with no details, just like a funny car. There's one seat and a basic dash. The chassis is a drag car design and it was actually uh, derived from a Plymouth Barracuda kit from 2004. And it has M&H tires that are two-piece plastic, but there's also a really nice set of vinyl Goodyear slicks that are tampo printed blue streaks. The body is basic Corvair and looks pretty close to correct. The kit has optional parts that can be added at your discretion. And the instructions have you trim the rear wheel openings to fit the slicks, but you'll have to follow the guidelines to do it correctly that I'll show you here. I recommend test fitting, test fitting, test fitting, and do some more test fitting to put this one together properly. Overall the dimensions are seven and a quarter inches long, two and three quarter inches wide, and two and a quarter inches high. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see they're very colorful and the registry is good. I know what you're saying. Where are those red and white stripes? <laughs> we'll have to show you how to build those. But anyway, I suggest you use the Microset uh, and Microsol setting solutions to make sure that these larger decals uh, conform to the body and stick well. And as always, use the manufacturer's safety guidelines when using any of the products you see here for your own safety. We'll be using mostly Model Master's uh, clear cement, uh, the liquid style, and sometimes super glue for strength and white glue for uh, the glassware. But other than that, uh, we'll let you know when there's any optional construction products being used. Construction starts with the motor, so grab these parts out of the kit. And we're going to dechrome uh, some of these uh, by using some bleach bath to get rid of some of the chrome that you see on some of the parts here. Um, because they're more realistic, uh, and once the bleach is gone, you just, uh, you just rinse it off and then uh, they can easily be painted for construction. As you've probably guessed, this is a great big Hemi engine. And first we'll assemble the blocks, the heads, the oils, uh, pan, and the timing cover. And we'll paint that orange, and the belt is flat black, and the valve covers are uh, semi-gloss black. The intake is steel, the transmission mount is steel, and the transmission is aluminum color. On the motor, the uh, starter's black, and I painted the blower inner panels red to match the body. Now attach the front and rear blower to the blower uh, body, and then in add that to the intake, and attach the uh, front to the snorkel, and add that to the blower. Then install the belt, and add the fuel pump, add the valve covers and the valve cover vents, and the transmission. Then install the header pipes into place. I wanted to add a little more realism to the motor. So I got one of these MAD detail kits, which is a pre-wired distributor with a coil, and added it to the engine. Here's the wiring diagram, so you can easily follow that to correctly wire your engine. These are pretty easy to install. I painted the, uh, the cap black and the shaft uh, aluminum, and then just uh, glued that into place. You drill out the hole uh, where the distributor would go and, and slip the distributor shaft in there and then route the wires uh, using the wiring diagram. And the black boots go on each wire and then they go uh, super glue them into place uh, on the valve covers there as they go straight through there to the heads. So that's about all there is to it and I really think it helps finish off the motor. Now the uh, you add the coil later on then and run the coil wire to it on the chassis and it's painted yellow. Now we'll get the parts out for the interior. Like I said, it's pretty basic. The tub and the dash are painted aluminum and the steering wheel is black with silver uh, inserts there and the seat is flat black. 
I did my seat belts uh, in some red with some buckles, and then the shifter has a black knob. Install the seat, the gas pedal, and the shifter, and detail the dash and add the steering wheel. Then install the dash into place in the slots. There weren't any decals for the dash, so I painted the instrument uh, panel section black, uh, and then you can just use uh, decals from your parts bin or, or grab some from the internet, size them up and print them out on a color printer and glue them with some white glue into place. And then paint the instrument panel, like I said, uh, black and then add the decals there. I deviated from the instructions at this point and went right to the uh, chassis assembly. So here are the parts that you're going to need for that. And this gets done in steps, so prior to working on the assemblies there needs to be some work done to the chassis pan itself. First thing you might want to do is remove this uh, script here. Uh, as I said, this was a borrowed chassis from another kit. Uh, but then uh, there is also a note in the instructions to remove a portion of the chassis to fit the body <laughs> for this kit. So cut the part off there that you see uh, shaded. This shows the uh, pan uh, that portions that need to be removed a little bit more clearly. Uh, use uh, I just used a, a, a saw to cut off the major portions and then sanded the rest down. Um, so you'll need to remove these uh, in about this shape in order to get it to uh, fit into the body. There's really no location markers, so um, you just kind of have to look at it here uh, to see where those cuts go. Then sand the cut lines and smooth it out, and and you're complete with uh, the modification. Now with those done, uh, we're going to take some of the parts we pulled out earlier and assemble prior to paint. So on the bottom side of the chassis pan, add the front leaf springs and the rear springs and the motor frame. And then assemble the rear axle and add that to the motor's frame. Uh, and then on the top side of the chassis pan, add the roll bar and the support bars. Uh, paint the chassis pan aluminum and then tape off the frame and paint the frame black. The battery's flat black with steel posts and red caps, and the wheelie bars are aluminum with black wheels. The shocks are red color and uh, tie rods are silver. Now install the tie rod onto the front axle and add the axle to the leaf springs. Then install the shocks from the axle to the frame. Add the wheelie bars to the rear of the frame. Install the interior tub in place in front of the roll bar. Then add the battery to the chassis pan under the roll bar and install the motor into place on the mounts. Add the ignition box and run the coil wire to that. If you desire, you can add more wiring as you see fit to make it more realistic looking engine bay. With this kit you get a choice of either M&H slicks that are two-piece styrene or Goodyear Tampo printed vinyl uh, slicks. So I'm going to use the Goodyear slicks for this and the rim backs are uh, made where they'll fit either either tire of your choice. To create a realistic looking tire, I pressed and rolled the tread on a piece of fine sandpaper about a 220 grit. Then paint the back silver and install the rim in the back into place on the tire. The tires then slide on the pins of the axles. The, um, the tires here uh, for the fronts are just the styrene units, so I painted them uh, flat black and then uh, the backings uh, silver and then in order to uh, create a roughed up uh, theme you can you can kind of uh, sand them again on some fine sandpaper but uh, it's going to take off some of the paint so uh, you have you may have to touch that up uh, so overall the finished look will be pretty decent looking tire for the shelf model but contest builders, builders would want to replace these tires with some aftermarket units so, heeding my own advice, I did just that and got a set of vinyl tires in my parts box instead of the kit tires and sanded off the tread. Uh, I'm also using a set of rims that were in my parts box because they fit these tires better. Uh, by pure chance, they're just about identical, however, to the kit version, so uh, the rim backs are more detailed. So, I use those just for effect. We'll show you the comparison here. Uh, as you can see, these are the kit's plastic tires installed. Uh, and they're in place and they, they don't look too bad, but uh, if you look on the this photo, these are my substituted uh, vinyl tires, so I went with those just for the added detail, and the proper attachment hole size was correct, so I didn't need to do anything there. Uh, I can't say uh, this enough, always keep your spare parts in case you need to use them for a future build. Now here are some 
surprise parts. Um, these parts aren't mentioned at, at all, but these are the exhaust collectors for the headers. Uh, they're on the chrome sprue, so if you want to locate those, uh, you can use them and cut off the locator pin and glue them into place at the end of the headers. At this point, you've got a great looking rolling chassis for your funny car with an awesome looking stance, and she's ready to roll. Gather these parts to work on the body, and then there are some issues to repair prior to paint, and there's some mods that need to be done to the chassis to fit. So work uh, the flash and the overmolded areas uh, throughout the body by cutting them off with a razor blade or scraping them and then sanding them down. And also, as a drag strip car, all the factory moldings, lights, and door handles would be removed. So go ahead and strip those off too. There's uh, mold lines um, located all over the body areas uh, in the expected places and then there's a pretty heavy one uh, right there clearly near the rear windows and there are some support bars in the windows that are pretty strong uh, mold attachments so you'll have to carefully, carefully cut those off you might want to use a small uh, razor saw and then just sand them to the sills you can see here uh, there's some over mold on the front fenders uh, and then there's some flash on the inner uh, portions so you'll need to carefully remove those uh, with a, a scraper and then a sanding stick and perhaps uh, some finishing sand uh, to make sure that those are all smoothed out to clean this body up. Now we're going to work on that rear wheel opening uh, because it needs to be modified to fit the chassis and the bigger tires. Uh, so install the chassis into place for test fitting and then mark the area that needs to be cut out. Uh, use a Dremel rotary tool or, or something that will um, nib this uh, plastic out so that you can uh, work slowly and remove the plastic that uh, needs to be taken out. Uh, you don't want to take out too much material so take your time and shape it properly according to the box and instructions. Once you've uh, cleaned all the flash and the over molding uh, and cut the fender wells for the rear wheels you can prime the whole car with a good quality primer then just wet sand the whole car with a 800 grit uh, and wet sand uh, the primer after it's dried with uh, the same 800 type grit and verify that all the body work is correct and you've fixed everything. Uh, go in over it again, make sure that everything good uh, looks good and then reprime it. And then when the body is correct, uh, wet sand it one more time to get ready for uh, your paint. While it might look like we're painting a flag, the blue stuff there is just some masking tape. So let the white paint the thing white and then after the white paint has cured, um, then you tape off the stripes. I, I used a what's called a 3M fine line tape uh, that's a quarter inch wide and I taped the four stripes. Now there are no markings for them so just use your eye uh, to make the spacing look correct and proper uh, for the top of the car. This area will remain white and then you'll paint the body red after the tape has been applied then once it's dried, you remove the tape uh, after the paint has cured, and then you'll see that now you have a red body with white stripes. When the body is dry enough to handle, uh, I used what's called uh, a metal foil. Uh, many people make this, and, and it's like tape. You just uh, adhere it to the body for your trim, and then you use a sharp knife to cut off the excess, and then burnish it down so that it looks like a metal highlighted trim. Now we can go ahead and add the decals to the body and these large decals really will benefit by using uh, plenty of warm water to both um, let them lift off and install them onto the body and then using some of that decal setting solution to make sure they conform to all the contours. So place all the decals on according to uh, the box art and then uh, we're going to after that has dried overnight uh, we're going to give that a coat of clear spray to lock in the decals and the foil. This model has a choice of two windows. One is the uh, red clear and the other one's just a standard clear window. So I used the red ones and I used some white glue uh, and a bead around the edges to put them into place. They'll stay there and the glue will dry clearly. You'll also get a choice between uh, stock or custom taillights and these rear 
end parts need painting and installed before the car is uh, assembled and finally. Uh, so paint the bumpers aluminum and assemble the and paint the parachute black and then the moon tank is listed as optional in instructions and I will add it to the rear chassis pan. So the lights are installed from the inside and the bumpers are put in place and then the parachute in the center of the rear. Here is what uh, this that's going to look like when you're done. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of an intricate uh, process here, but um, once completed, there's what the uh, rear end will, will be like, and the moon tank is attached in the center of the panel. The uh, cover plates for the front lights are painted aluminum, and they're installed into place. Now we're going to carefully insert the body into the chassis, and you start at the rear and kind of shoehorn it in by uh, pulling the body sides apart slightly uh, as it goes in and then you, you drop it down towards the front and place it into the uh, into the body. And once it's uh, set up uh, it'll just stay there without glue. It fits pretty tightly. So we've mostly got the completion done. As you can see this is a Corvair funny car. Um, and the Corvair lives on. Here's the uh, the front end as it uh, appears uh, uh, and a close up and and you can see it's it's pretty uh, it's a pretty bold looking styling exercise here's the uh, rear section with uh, the wheelie bars in place and uh, we've got the race uh, markings in the rear window and it's it's quite a crazy looking uh, vehicle altogether but uh, just what you'd expect to come out of those um, crazy 70s and the funny car craze that happened now once again there's going to be some extra parts, but don't throw them away. You never know when you're going to need a Corvair back window. So put those in your parts box and uh, get ready for the next build. Well, there you have it. I'm not sure how they pulled it off, but they used a uh, drag chassis from a Barracuda body and a Hemi engine, and somehow it all works. Uh, this thing went together um, with a little modification, and uh, I wouldn't call this a... Uh, a good kit for a beginner because of the mods and the uh, paint stripes and the large decals. Um, this is for a more of an advanced builder so you'll have to take your time to get this thing to look just right but as you can see it does. It really looks pretty cool. Um, the moon tank is optional uh, and so are some of the uh, other parts there but the fit and finish isn't too bad and it's a standard Corvair body from a screw bottom kit. So. Um, put this one together and put it on your shelf. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or you can find us on Facebook and always at our website, www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.